Hello, this is Mr. Fleming, and we are St. Paul Diocesan School, and it is Tuesday, January 26th, and you guys are having your remote day because of PSATs and masses. It's a rather confusing week, I know. Um, in the classes, we'll be doing direct observation now until the end of the quarter. And the last video, I think I did a drawing for you guys, and I want to not do that. I know watching me draw is as exciting as watching paint dry, but I think it is important that I do a demonstration. If you look behind me, you can see I have set up, set up a still life. It's a little bit different than last time, and one of the differences is I've moved the light source to be directly in front of it, and that's given me a hot shadow. You should set up a light source with your um, direct observation, and I think you need to set up one at home. We will be drawing in the classroom, but the classroom really isn't enough time, and you really need to be in a different space. When you're doing direct observation, you need to be in the right frame of mind to get one done. There's really no rush to get this done, and you want a good one. And I say that because if you go to the portfolio requirements of Mass Art, Rhode Island School of Design, Siena School of Design, I guarantee you, direct observation is one of their requirements, at least one, sometimes as many as five. A lot of our teachers believe that's a good way to look at someone's ability to use composition and design. So that's where we are. So I have my light source and I've set up my light source. It is a variety of different items and I put a gray cloth behind it. What that does is remove what's called visual noise. Um, you can use a viewfinder. I might do that in a different video. Video. I never really liked them that much. It's a personal bias. It doesn't mean they're not good. Other people can't use them. I personally don't like them. For me, it's much more important to have a good object to look at with a definite light source. That allows to help the drawing process going. So that's your first stage is to set up your own light source. Now, when you're doing the drawing, the first drawing you want to do, and I'm not sure how well you can see my background, but you'll be able to see this drawing a little bit better. And you can see here what I have is what's called a contour line. That's really very important. That's where you start out. You just go to the outside line of the shapes. You don't draw the inside. You just draw the outside of the shape. You want to get this one done first. What this will allow you to do is to create positive and negative space. It'll also help you to get your proportions down before you go into your final drawing. That's your first stage. Once you get that one done, you want to set up, I personally think, people draw differently and there are different drawing habits, but a line drawing. And from there, my, my contour drawing, I set up my line drawing, I have my shapes, I have my background, my major elements are drawn out for me, and then I can start going in there and working out shading, adding tone modeling, whatever you want to call it, but you want to try to give some volume to those shapes to make them look like they are in three-dimensional space. So we're using gradation of tone. Now I'm using charcoal, and you can use graphite if you want to. I Just because the camera being on video, I want to use charcoal so you can see it. And then I go out there and I try to pull up my, my, my objects, increase my shadows, and get a good drawing. Now these are just sketches, and that's where I want you to be in your sketchbook. I want you to do lots of sketches. The end goal is to get a final product of a direct observation. But it's going to take you several times. Very few people are just really instantly good at this. And even the very best artists and the very talented artists, this one will show any kind of weakness that you have. But embrace that. By doing the direct observation, I guarantee you, your drawing skills will improve. As someone who loves to draw, who's who's taught people how to draw, it is probably the best way for you to improve any type of drawing, even if you're drawing strictly from your imagination, giving yourself time to look directly at an object, trying to render it, to slowly and focusly concentrate on those objects, you will improve as an artist. So as we are um, on our remote day this uh, January week, um, I'd like you to set up an object at home and get these drawings in your sketchbook. And for those people whose sketchbooks I have not seen, I will do it this week. And for those people whose sketchbooks I have seen and are missing drawings, we have a few weeks to the end of the quarter. And if anybody wants to come to me and say, Mr. Fleming, I want a B, Mr. Fleming, I want an A, Mr. Fleming, I want an 80, I want a 90, great. Show me your work. Show me something. 
don't just come to me and say, I think I deserve an A because I'm a good student and come on, Mr. Fleming, you can do this. Show me something. I need to see something in that sketchbook. It could be your own drawings, but I'm looking for time spent in that sketchbook. And that's what we'll be looking at from now to the end of the quarter. We'll be finishing up any work you have not done. I'll be working on direct observation in the classroom and at home. And that's where we are. So please make art because art won't make itself.